Welcome to Colombia for the second stop of the Qatar Airways GKA World Tour. We're back in Salinas del Rey for the second straight year. It's blessed with strong trade winds and kickers that are the perfect playground for the world's best freestyle kiters, helping them put on a spectacular show. The arrival of the GKA Freestyle World Cup has transformed this sleepy backwater in the year that we've been away. Interest in kiteboarding has exploded and local businesses have sprung up to meet the demand. The crowds that now throng to the beaches cheer on their heroes and it speaks volumes about the sport's popularity. The South American athletes battling in their own backyard are particular favourites. Brazil's Bruna Caggia is coming off a win in the first round in Qatar, and she's pushing for a fourth world title at the age of 36. I'm really happy, obviously, with starting the year with a win, and more importantly, because I'm super happy with my riding. I think like that's the key thing for me. So right now, all in my mind, I just want to go out there and like show my style, show like the tricks that I have, and just have a good time and enjoy the spot that has kickers. And I think that's uh, something that sets it apart from the other ones. And I think uh, do different new tricks in it. Men's reigning world champion Gianmaria Coccoluto is hoping for the same after his own first round victory. This year, what keeps me motivation is first that I have the world title, so I need to defend. And in my mind, I always want to become three time world champion because the first time can be lucky, the second time, because you're good, the third time you become a legend, you know? So, yeah, this is my goal for the next few years and I will push hard and training and try to make my dream come true. The excitement for this year's Colombian tour stop has been ramped up by some rule changes. A new format will reward greater variety and innovation. The hope is to push the development of freestyle kiteboarding and boost the show factor. Head freestyle judge Rui Mera explained the changes to the riders before the competition kicked off. The major changes here is mostly the variety that riders are searching for right now. Uh, riders have been going at it on the combos, lines, using the kickers for multiple tricks in a row, opening more chances of landing more tricks besides just the seven trick attempts that they have right now. I have to say, of course, change is not a great thing. No one likes it. Riders are adapting, but the level we've seen and the variety overall, it's been quite amazing to, to watch. And uh, from the judges' point of view, amazing to see people from all styles of kite surfing, freestyle coming and all performing and all results have been very tight. It's not just because you do this trick that you're gonna win the event for sure. Everything, every hit has been a surprise and great to watch. I think the new format really helps open up the competition. It really helps riders be able to think outside of the box. One of the things we're seeing here, there's so many young kicks, they now have an opportunity to have a little bit of a strategy to kind of mix their repertoire. Right? It's not all about going double-double. It isn't a spin to win anymore. You can have quality in all different sections. And if you kind of add that up, multiply and subtract, you'll be able to create this little perfect vibe that the judges are really starting to like. And it is great to see you know, some innovation, everybody bringing new things from different sports, different generations, really good to see. And I think it has really improved the kiteboarding scene. As registration got underway, it was time to get to know some of the faces of those who are going to be battling it out in Salinas del Rey. Papi, Colombia. Colombia. No pressure, let's see what happens. 
There are a total of 35 riders representing 16 countries for the GKA Freestyle World Cup Colombia. We started off with the first heats of the women. Eight athletes are battling it out on the waters of Salinas del Rey. A perfect north northeasterly breeze has filled in the competition area and the women have proved that they could handle the conditions in Colombia. In the first round, Natalie Lambrecht is not messing around, putting down four solid scores and taking the heat win over Alexandra Torres. In the quarterfinals, Estefania Rose overtook Therese Tarbell, securing her place in the semis. A highlight of the day was definitely Michaeli Sol, who took home the top score with a solid eight points for a stylish Hinterberger five. But let's not forget Bruna Caggia, who looked on top form and hungry after her first season win in Qatar. That's a wrap for day one. We had a full day of action at Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Cup here in Colombia. The wind showed up and the women put their game faces on. The wind came in early on day two of the GKA Freestyle World Cup and promised a full day of action on the water. The plan was to begin with the men. It was their first time out on the water in the heat of the battle in Salinas del Rey. The hope was to get through three full rounds of competition. Ahead of the men's first heats, it was clear the riders had a fire in their bellies. The energy and excitement were palpable as they prepared their gear and made their final pre-flight checks. The tension started to build as the competitors made their way out onto the water. We started with the first round of the men, which featured some of the newest riders on tour, all eager to prove themselves in this new competition format. Proving he's one to watch is Canadian Jack Reader, who took advantage of the format. He's been one of the most vocal advocates for changing the rules. The judges listened to his pleas and he rewarded them by putting on an absolutely barnstorming performance of combos and rewinds in his first heat of the competition. Pretty stoked on my slim to blind. Uh, no grab, but it felt pretty big, got the kite really low, so... To score an eight on that. Another standout of the day was the Dominican powerhouse, Pasito Martinez. He opened up with a banger of a first heat with a huge tantrum backside three. He showcased absolute style, power, and execution. <laughs> Feeding off the crowd was Dominican Luis Alberto Cruz, who blew everyone away with his massive back-to-back -back tricks. He had the height and control. He secured the highest single trick score of the competition so far, managing a nine for his frontside 319 off the kickers on the outside. Very, very good, to be honest. It's the same conditions as my place in Cabarete. For me, Cabarete is the same as Colombia, the same as Brazil. We are brothers. Colombia, Brazil, Dominican Republic. Carlos Mario, who took second place in Qatar, has been training in Colombia for more than a month and is gunning for first place here in Salinas del Rey. 
he landed a massive Dum Dum 5, which was one of the standout moves of the day. That rounded off a banger of a second day in Colombia. Perfect conditions meant we got through three rounds of competition in the men's freestyle. The crowds that packed the beach certainly loved it. The beach was absolutely pulsing with energy. Every trick landed brought more excitement and louder cheers. Day three here in Salinas del Rey in Colombia for the second stop of the GKA Kite World Tour. The plan is to start off with round number four of the men's and advance through the competition. The forecast looks good and some of the riders are already warming up. We get to see who can keep their hopes alive as we get to the business end of the competition. It was another action-packed day in Colombia as we saw the men's fourth round and quarter-finals take to the water. And besides the competition, one of the most important elements of the event is the energy on the beach. The locals were stoked to see kiteboarding blowing up here in Salinas del Rey. It's just one year since the GKA launched in Colombia and this spot has seen a huge boost in popularity. We started today with the men's fourth round. The top two riders advance while the bottom two are eliminated, meaning that it started to get serious out here in Colombia. The highest heat score of round number four was landed by Valentin Garat, who secured an 8.87 for a slick slim seven. As we arrived in the quarterfinals, each heat was stacked with phenomenal talent. One of the standout heats saw 13-year-old Finn Flugel achieve his dream of making it to the last eight. I have no words, I actually do. I'm just too happy and so it's really crazy. Like now I'm growing more, I land all the tricks. What are you doing? I'm coming for all of you guys. He started when he was six years old. He always wanted to be on the water, wanted to kite. So he really pushed us super hard to grow up with that sport. Luis Alberto Cruz did not disappoint. His slim chance nine was absolutely ridiculous. He scored an outstanding 9.4, taking over the top spot for the highest score of the day. I feel so happy to be here in the semi-finals. It's gone so well for me getting here. We're going to the final now. Maxime Chablot landed a stylish back mode five with both a nose and seatbelt grab to secure his spot in the semi-final. Super stoked to make it through to the semi-final. It was a really rough heat. Conditions are pretty, pretty gnarly, pretty difficult out there. A lot of waves, chop, strong wind. Hurt my knee a little bit on the last jump. Um, landed really deep on top of the next wave, which, which sucks a bit, but uh, it's going to be all good and ready for the semi. In the final heat of the day, pure energy and power were on display, with Carlos Mario facing off against Jan Maria Coccoluto, newcomer Jack Reader and local favourite Juan Rodriguez. Mentally ready for the comp, let's see if my body's ready. But yeah, I will give 100% and try to go in the next heat. Looks windy, so we'll just land what we know we can. The four athletes went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Rodriguez, Coccoluto, Mario and Rida traded blows, each throwing down bangers that bettered their rivals. In the frenzy, the lead in the heat constantly changed hands. But in the end, Coccoluto and Mario did enough to edge into the lead and advance to the semis. It was another great day here in Colombia. We managed to get through round number four and all the way through the quarterfinals of the men's freestyle. The athletes reached new heights off the ramps the bay provided and the new format is working really well with variations, combos, rewinds and grabs all on display. The scene is now set for the final climactic action.
today is the day, ladies and gentlemen, that we are going to be crowning our champions here in Colombia. In your head, you visualize your tricks, and then I always have my last trick. If I manage all the tricks I want, then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll go for something crazy, maybe something I've never, ever even done before. Full send, there is no excuse. I think it's pretty clear. Win or nothing, so uh, I'm gonna go all in. Are you ready? The crowds packed the beach in anticipation of the final rounds of competition. Once the wind funneled through, the two semi-final heats of the women's took to the water and they were close battles from start to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruna Cangia didn't crash a single trick during her semi-final heat. She opened with a crisp, slim chance and followed that with a stylish inverted front to blind that netted her a huge 7.43 and the lead. The tour veteran was then the first to land a toe side maneuver, a chromobe, which alongside her other flawless tricks secured her a place in the final. It was really good. I'm really happy with the front blind that I did. It felt pretty nice when this is the footage now. And just happy to be in another final, feeling really stoked. She was joined there by Claudia Leon, who landed a massive Hinterberger 3 and a slim chance that earned a 5.97 and her spot in the final. I'm so stoked on these finals because uh, uh, last year it was super difficult for me to be here. I hadn't trained so much, so I was a little bit stressed out. I ended fifth of the comp and now I'm in the final, so... <laughs> I'm, I feel super happy and I'm just gonna have fun. Michaeli Sol came out swinging. She landed two big tricks showing height and technicality out of the gate and never looked back. My head was going like super fast, but my body was still really slow. So in the final, I'm gonna have to change that. Gotta be more sharp, but uh, feeling confident. Can't wait to be in the final with the girls. And yeah, just gonna go out there and send it. She scored her place in the final alongside Natalie Lambrecht after an impressive second semi. Uh, yeah, in the beginning I was crashing a lot. So at the end, I just told myself I have to pull myself together and land these four tricks now. And then you know you can go to the final. So yeah, I'm so happy and I'm excited to ride now with the other girls. In the first men's semi-final, Luis Alberto Cruz continued his dominant display of height and power. The crowd went wild for his absolutely massive frontside 319, but ultimately he couldn't produce enough variety and was overhauled in a huge upset. He finished behind Carlos Mario, who landed a chromobe 5 off a beautiful ramp. And then he followed with a combo to secure the top spot and his place in the final. He did it alongside Manuel Suarez. In the second men's semi-final, Maxime Chablot added stylish grabs, while Gianmaria Coccoluto delivered his signature Italian style to deliver both of them places in the final. They were strong and consistent. Final. They dispensed with the youngster Flugel, even though he threw down some bangers. I started off really with the goal of building a heat because it's really tough conditions and it's not easy to actually land four tricks with the new format and everything. So yeah, pretty stoked with it and ready for the final. Wind was lighter, condition was much better than yesterday. So I'm super stoked to go with Maxime in the final. Uh, yes, let's give all. With the finals minutes away, 
The crowds filled the beach with the traditional electric Colombian spirit. In the women's final, Michele Sol showed power, experience and technical brilliance, demonstrating how to take advantage of the punchy conditions. I'm so stoked to be back on top, honestly. Conditions are really tough, but I managed to pull through and yeah, I took the win here and definitely feeling a little, I don't know what the word is, uh, re like a redemption almost, you know, from Qatar getting second to getting first here. It definitely does feel really nice being back on top. So yeah, I'm going to try to continue doing this for the rest of the year. And yeah, it's super stoked. Second place was snatched by Claudia Leon, who secured four huge scores, including some beautiful combinations. How must I feel like? <laughs> I can't believe it. It's, I think it's the first time I've been second. Uh, I had a first in Saudi Arabia, but this one feels super incredible. Because here, last year, I ended fifth. So now, I, I, I don't have words. The men's final was an absolute showstopper. Every rider displayed tricks, that set the bar ridiculously high. Manuel Suarez opened with a banger directly in front of the crowd. Tour leader Gianmaria Coccoluto laid down precise tricks, yet it wasn't enough to deliver him the win. Maxime Chablot rose to the challenge. He demonstrated style, variety and flair. He landed this huge back mob seven, securing him an 8.23 and second place here in Colombia. But it was Carlos Mario who claimed his first win of the season. He went move for move, not skipping a beat and showed why he is not just here to take part, but to take over. It's beyond words to win the competition here in Colombia. I remember being in Qatar and thinking it was a matter of time until I was back on top. So I went back to Brazil and focused 100% on giving my best in Colombia. The final heat was spectacular. Manuel, Coccoluto, Maxime are all riding so well. So luckily I managed to beat them and get the victory. Very happy. I want to thank everyone on the organization who put on this amazing event, and I want to thank my sponsors, the family who's always supporting me, and the Colombian public who's just marvelous. So not much training, having to miss the first event, um, been skiing a lot and not kiting so much. I'm super stoked with the second place. Already making the final was a, a step better than last year, so um, I'm really happy with the result, and, and yeah, I can't wait for the next events. So I'm super stoked for my third place here in Colombia. Uh, I had a bit, all the competition was a bit sketchy for me for my neck injury, but today was feel much better. Maxim and Carlos was riding really good, so they really deserve the first and second place. Uh, yeah, super stoked. Now can't wait for the next stop. What an amazing way to finish off a competition. The crowd was going absolutely wild on the beach. Our champions, Michele Sol and Carlos Mario, were lost in the joyous melee at one point. The vibe, the energy and the fire has truly been amazing here in Colombia. We hope to see you again here in Salinas del Rey.